Recent volcanic activity at Mount St. Helens has sparked interest and concern about its effect on Yellowstone. Would it trigger this mighty supervolcano? If it does, what would be humanity's fate? Well, there's only way to find out. Watch this video. Mount Helens is a stratovolcano formed from layers of lava, ash, and volcanic rocks. It is located in the Cascade Range of Washington State, USA, and lies about 50 miles northeast of Portland, Oregon, and 96 miles south of Seattle, Washington. Known for its symmetrical cone shape, Mount St. Helens is part of the Cascade Volcanic Arc, which includes several other notable volcanoes such as Mount Rainier and Mount Hood. Forcing us to face an age-old question, what do we do when sleeping giants wake? The volcano was named in 1792 by British explorer George Vancouver in honor of Aline Fitzherbert, a British diplomat. However, Native American tribes had long known and respected the mountain, referring to it by various names such as Lewitt or Luwalaklaf. Notable events in Mount Helen's past. The volcano's recorded history of eruptions dates back to the early 19th century. In 1842, Mount St. Helens experienced its first documented eruption, a minor event that caused damage to the surrounding environment and wildlife habitats. However, the most significant and devastating eruption occurred on May 18, 1980. A massive landslide triggered by a 5.1 magnitude earthquake caused the north face of the volcano to collapse unleashing a powerful lateral blast. The eruption of Mount St. Helens on May 18, 1980, was one of the most dramatic geologic moments in American history. The blast devastated an area of about 230 square miles, flattening forests and melting glaciers. It ejected ash and volcanic gases high into the atmosphere, resulting in ash falling across several states and even reaching parts of Canada. The landscape around Mount St. Helens was dramatically altered. The once conical summit lost about 1,300 feet in height and left behind a horseshoe-shaped crater. Sadly, 57 people lost their lives, including geologists and a photographer who was monitoring the volcano's activity. And 57 lives were lost, including Dave Johnston, for two months prior to that eruption, scientists with the U.S. Geological Survey... In March 2016, Mount St. Helens erupted again, sending a plume of ash and steam into the sky. But this event was significantly smaller than the 1980 eruption. Features of Mount Helen Mount St. Helens is known for its distinctive features, several of which includes crater and dome complex. Following the 1980 eruption, Mount St. Helens underwent significant changes, including the formation of a horseshoe-shaped crater where the summit once stood. Within this crater, a new lava dome has been growing. Pyroclastic flows. Something triggers a pyroclastic flow about 10 times bigger than all that came before. Pyroclastic flows are fast-moving mixtures of gas, ash, and rock fragments that form a thick, turbulent cloud and race down the slopes of a volcano at extremely high speeds. They are one of the most dangerous volcanic hazards due to their high temperature and speed, up to 1,000 degrees. Lahars. Lahars are fast-moving flows of water-saturated volcanic debris, triggered by heavy rainfall or melting ice. Lahars form when volcanic materials become saturated with water. They vary in size and viscosity, ranging from thick mixtures resembling wet concrete to fast-moving floods of debris and water. They can also travel long distances. Volcanic triggering. What is volcanic triggering? Volcanic triggering refers to the process where one volcanic eruption influences another eruption nearby 
or even at a distant location. And there's some evidence that the large eruption in Japan a year or two ago that caused the, the, the great tsunami actually may have affected some of the volcanoes in Japan as well. Mount Pinatubo, Philippines. The eruption of Mount Pinatubo in 1991 is considered to have been triggered by tectonic and volcanic processes related to nearby Mount Arayat, Icelandic volcanoes. In Iceland, volcanic systems are often interconnected through shared volcanic systems and fissure networks. Eruptions at one volcano can sometimes trigger seismic activity and even influence magma movement at nearby volcanic systems due to the country's location on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Katmai, Novarupta, Alaska, USA. The Novarupta eruption in 1912, one of the largest volcanic eruptions of the 20th century, occurred within the Katmai region of Alaska. This eruption is believed to have been triggered by volcanic activity associated with Mount Katmai, which is nearby. Mount Etna and Stromboli, Italy Mount Etna, located on the island of Sicily, and Stromboli, an island volcano north of Sicily, are part of the same volcanic arc in the Mediterranean. Eruptions at Stromboli have been observed to affect activity at Mount Etna and vice versa due to their proximity and shared tectonic environment. Can Mount Helen eruption trigger Yellowstone's own? No! The correct answer is no. Apart from the 560 miles difference between Yellowstone National Park and Mount St. Helens, which makes it difficult for them to directly influence each other's geological activity. Each volcano has its own distinct magmatic system. Yellowstone's supervolcano system is driven by a mantle plume, resulting in large-scale eruptions and the formation of a caldera, while Mount Helen operates under a different geological mechanism known as subduction generating magma that rises to the surface. Mantle hotspot, where there's a stationary zone of melting and the North American tectonic plate drifts over the top of it. And you get a chain of volcanoes. The Yellowstone system is the youngest of those volcanoes. This process leads to more frequent, but generally smaller eruptions compared to Yellowstone's super eruption. Picture this, two separate houses on opposite ends of a city. If one house develops a foundation issue, it's unlikely to directly affect the foundation of the other house, even if they're in the same neighborhood. Lastly, if at all Mount St. Helens were to trigger another nearby volcano, one of the most likely candidates would be Mount Adams. Adams has not erupted for nearly 1,100 years. While Mount Adams is one day likely to erupt again, this volcano also poses a separate hazard. Mount Adams is located about 30 miles to the east-southeast of Mount St. Helens in Washington State. Both volcanoes are part of the Cascade Range and are geologically related, so an eruption from one could potentially affect the other due to their proximity and shared volcanic system. If you're liking this video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Reasons Volcanoes Trigger Each Other Proximity volcanoes that are close to each other can influence each other's activity through shared geological structures, magma chambers, and even regional stress patterns. Shared magma systems. In volcanic regions, multiple volcanoes may mean I share interconnected magma systems or volcanic plumbing networks. Changes in magma pressure, composition, or movement at one volcano can potentially affect neighboring volcanoes leading to coordinated volcanic activity. Eruption of Yellowstone. Volcano. If Yellowstone decided to erupt, the results would be devastating. But how bad would they be? In a rare geological twist, where eruption at Mount St. Helens sets off a super eruption at Yellowstone, the blast would be like nothing the world has ever seen. The ground would shake violently as billions of magma burst forth, creating a massive caldera collapse. Cities like Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and parts of Montana 
would be instantly buried under volcanic debris. The iconic geysers and hot springs of Yellowstone would be destroyed by a vast, steaming caldera stretching for miles. Ashfall would cover cities as far away as Chicago and Denver, plunging them into darkness and chaos. Air travel would stop, and breathing would become hazardous even hundreds of miles from the eruption. <laughs> the eruption would release massive amounts of sulfur dioxide (PCI) into the stratosphere, triggering a global cooling event. Temperatures would drop worldwide as the sun's rays would be blocked by the ash cloud. Agriculture would collapse, leading to food shortages and famine. Unprecedented food crisis is engulfing the world. Millions would be displaced from their homes, seeking shelter and safety from the ash-choked landscape. Disease outbreaks would spread in crowded evacuation centers. Rescue efforts would be hampered by blocked roads and contaminated water supplies. The eruption would leave a scar on the Earth's surface that's visible even from space. Rivers and lakes would be clogged with ash, suffocating fish and wildlife. Toxic gases would poison the air, water, and soil, creating a silent, dreary zone around Yellowstone. Fortunately for us, a Yellowstone eruption is nowhere near due. The last major eruption at Yellowstone occurred 640,000 years ago, and the average gap between eruptions has been around 725,000 years. According to the United States Geological Survey, the likelihood of another eruption occurring in any given year is extremely low, at about 0.00014%. Can we survive a Yellowstone eruption? Even if a great Yellowstone supervolcano eruption blanketed thousands of miles with dangerous ash, wiping out plant life and affecting people in its wake, it wouldn't wipe out humanity altogether. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the magma chamber beneath the Yellowstone caldera is only 5 to 15 percent molten, meaning there may not be enough lava flow for more explosive eruptions to occur. So, while a Yellowstone eruption would be disastrous, it is not going to happen in a great number of centuries to come, and neither is Mount Helen eruption going to trigger it. Let us know your thoughts about this video in the comments. And remember to like and subscribe for more intriguing discoveries like this. See you in the next video.